Hi, everyone. We're back with another episode of The Content Mix. And as you already know, my name is Kyler, and today I'm excited to be here with Andrea Aldana, co-founder of Expulso, a female-owned digital marketing agency in Madrid, Spain. Andrea has given herself the title of Digital Marketing Hustler, and she has definitely worked hard to get to where she is today. Born and raised in Nicaragua, Andrea always had her eyes set on exploring the world around her. After working a few years in Managua, Andrea took a leap of faith and moved to Madrid to pursue an MBA and a master's degree in digital business. After working in various agencies in Madrid, she decided to start her own business with her best friend from Nicaragua. Combining their passion for graphic design, content marketing, and communication, Andrea and her co-founder strive to help their clients, quote, release the magic within. And I'm very fortunate to be able to call Andrea a dear friend of mine. So without further ado, Thank you so much for joining us, Andrea. Hi. Thank How you so much you? for having me. <laughs> Where are you tuning in from today? I'm actually back home in Nicaragua. So I'm visiting my family. Haven't seen them in two years. Yeah, because of the so, pandemic, I'm sure. Yeah, so because of the pandemic back. and everything. Yeah. And that's great. And so your business is online, right? So you can do it from, yeah. from there. And we'll talk more about Expulso later on in the interview. But first, I kind of wanted to start um, by talking more about you. And can you introduce yourself to our audience and kind of tell us who you are, um, how you got involved in marketing, um, and kind of just a bit of a reflection on your career so far? Yeah. But like, you did an amazing introduction. So, <laughs> um, <laughs> so I know um, you well. Andrea. <laughs> yeah, you know me well. <laughs> So I actually started working in digital marketing um, six years ago, actually back here, back home. When I was in college, I did like business administration and I wasn't really sure what I wanted to do. So I decided to double major in marketing. So like coming out of college, I would focus specifically in marketing. So I started working in this digital agency here, which was one of the, actually the only ones that they were doing um, SEM and PPC um, campaigns for clients, and they were only mainly focused on that. So, you know, I got started there, and that was kind of like my introduction to digital marketing, to content marketing, to um, SEO, to web design, and everything. So, that was actually my start six years ago. And then, pretty much, I moved on from there. I saw that there was still like a huge gap of knowledge for me in the strategy part and the execution part um, in content and SEO. So, I decided to actually moved to Spain to further my education, to learn how to implement all those things in an actual company, you know, more like um, to expand on it instead of doing it very, very small and very, very specific to one area of marketing. Mm -hmm. And, and then six years later, mm -hmm. here I am. Here you are. Um, and I'm just curious too, because I think, you know, many people I'm sure are listening probably can't tell you where Nicaragua is on the map, <laughs> which is unfortunate. It's a beautiful <laughs> yeah. country that I've been to twice and it's a beautiful people and a beautiful culture. Um, but I think it's more common, I think, in your experience and what I've known from talking to that a lot of people that are going to leave Nicaragua usually go to the U.S. or somewhere maybe yeah. not in North America. So kind of why did you choose to go to Europe and specifically Spain? So actually my whole like high school career. Uh, my mindset was going to the U.S. So, um, and actually I was going to do my master's degree in the U.S. in Florida where I have like my dad's family lives there. So it was a lot easier for me to do that. But it was actually more when it came to the money. So I like had to pay for everything, you know, moving there. And I could have taken a student loan even in the U.S. being from Nicaragua and it would have been fine. But when I was given the option by actually a family member of, hey, like, listen, Europe is actually they have pretty good education and it's a lot cheaper than the U.S. And you can actually because I've been to the U.S. many times to say you could actually get to know Europe, travel around and kind of live a new experience. So that was why in my case. And it's actually the case for a lot of Nicaraguan people. Because, you know, because money wise and everything else, they actually decided to go to Europe because it's a lot cheaper to get an education there. And universities from Europe and even Spain, they're highly recognized here in Nicaragua. So it actually makes it a lot easier if you move back to Nicaragua because you studied everything in Spanish and you can actually relate it to um, your work here. So actually a lot of people are starting to do that a lot more now. But usually everybody will tell you that they want to go to the U.S. Yeah, because it's so close. You have that influence. Yeah, because it's so close. It's like a two-hour flight to go to Miami, like from mm -hmm. here to Miami. 
So one thing I'm curious too now is that you said you started working in Nicaragua in a very small and limited market, and then you come to Europe, which even comparing that to the North American market, you're working with different countries, different languages, especially EMEA, you're working in the Middle East as well. Yeah. So it's a big, big shift and it's definitely diverse and your whole strategy has to be changed, you know, to really adapt yeah. to the different markets. So what are some of like the biggest challenges for you in that sense when coming into EMEA? Um, and were there any huge or major differences that you didn't expect to encounter? There were big differences, um, specifically when they would do the strategy part. I think over here in Nicaragua and maybe Latin America, you're expected to do everything on your own Mm -hmm. because they're kind of like testing you and see, okay, like, let's see what you can do. Let's see what you're doing. And over here in Europe, it's more taking into account everybody in the team. Mm -hmm. Um, And I think it's more the teamwork that they're like, okay, how can we all do this? Like, how can you bring something to the table and how can Mm -hmm. everybody else like bring something else to the table? Um, I think that here in Latin America, it's very like individualized, like you do this, you do that. And then you kind of come together. We're still lacking that like team effort. Yeah. And collaboration. And that was the biggest thing in Europe because I expected Mm -hmm. to do everything on my own and not have any help. Mm -hmm. Um, And people were like, no, but like work with us, reach out to us, ask us questions. And I'm like, okay, (laughs) I will. (laughs) Not (laughs) used to this. She yeah, I thought people were very kind and friendly from the beginning. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Yeah. So that has been like one of the main, like the, mm. the main thing that I would say is that like the teamwork and how people expect you to collaborate with everyone and how mm. everyone's so open to actually working in teams mm. over here in, you know, Nicaragua. And I think Latin American generally are so used to working on your own mm. that it kind of like, it's a different mindset of like, okay, I'll do this. Okay. And then you let me know how it goes instead of like having the collaboration of the team beforehand. I'm sure you find the collaboration to be helpful. No one carrying out a new campaign or something like that. It's good to have a lot of input from different people. It is. It's great. And it's a lot better. Like you can actually um, figure a couple of things out before you even launch a campaign or before you start doing some type of content Mm -hmm. um, that instead of doing it once you launched everything or once you posted something. um, Mm -hmm. So it is a lot better. That's great. Now, I also love that you call yourself a hustler because I know you from firsthand experience, you are a hustler. Now you came from Nicaragua to Spain and you got involved in working in different agencies, I think through internships, probably through your programs. And then you decided you wanted to stay. So you had to really hustle in terms of getting, you know, the paperwork set and kind of getting your feet on the ground here. And I was just curious to know, because now we're going to talk a bit, um, in in a little bit, we're going to talk more about your agency that you just started in the past, I think, a year, year and a half. Um, But I want to know, like, how your agency experience, specifically in Madrid, kind of pushed you to, like, become a better marketer and fine tune your skills and eventually kind of drive this passion of starting your own agency here. Yeah. So I worked like when I actually started to work as a freelancer back in 2018. Mm. So I found two different agencies that I was working with. Um, and me coming from Latin America and having that very like U.S. mindset, we're mm. very focused on client service and customer service. Mm. And it's different how you go about communication with clients over here than how you do it back in Spain. Mm -hmm. Because, for example, in Spain, people are very much like they want to get to know you before Mm -hmm. they get to know your services sometimes. So it's different. You see that there is pretty much they say, like, I just want to know if you're a good person and you'll Mm -hmm. be able to actually if the strategy doesn't work out or if I don't like the content, I just want to know that you're going to do whatever it takes to actually pull Mm -hmm. through and make this happen and, you know, make sure that we are happy and that you're happy. So that actually, you know, that was a little bit different Mm -hmm. because I wasn't so used to, I was very much used to having, you know, um, full communication with the customer and everything, but it was somewhat different than what they have here because they want to get to know your character, not your experience. Okay. So, you know, that even had to like, I had to step up my comfort zone to be a little bit more open to people to get to know Mm -hmm. me instead of what I do in terms of work and what I can deliver in terms of, you know, goals and everything else and setting objectives. So that was kind of like the big difference. And also there was still like a lack of knowledge from the customer part. Like the people were still not understanding the services that we were selling to them. Mm -hmm. So that actually made me go into selling things differently, actually not selling things different, like in the way of, you know, we're going to get this ROI or we're going to do this type of content. And these are going to be our content pillars. It's completely different, you know, um, how you do it. I actually tried to tell them 
why we're doing this and how this will help them in the long run or how this is going to help their company or, you know, just trying to get them to understand what we do instead of do, leaving it like up in the air. Like, OK, yeah, you'll do this and then we'll figure it out and then let us know how it goes. Yeah, um, so from that your has po- been kind of like, yeah. It's like your point of view is kind of in Spain. It's more about the first impression with the person rather than actually what you can provide to them, which is interesting. And I kind of wanted to know, like, does that impact like marketing in general when you're doing a campaign in Spain in terms like with a any product, for example, and then you have the customer, like, do you change your approach based on that? You knowing that's like maybe a culturally like the Spanish market would be more receptive to something that's a bit more personal, I guess, in a sense. Yeah. Specifically when the messaging, mm-hmm. um, we really do have to think about how to make it a little bit more warmer and more personal mm-hmm. than, you know, more like straight to the point. We actually do have to think about how it's going to affect you know, the end consumer and you kind of have to think about it twice. Sometimes, you know, you're so like, okay, these are the step and this is my process and this is everything that I have to do. But when it comes to the Spanish market, you kind of have to um, think about how this is going to affect in the, like in the long run and everything that you're going to be doing. And in the team, you know, for example, whenever we work with other companies, how the team is going to react to it, their feedback and everything else. So you do have to approach it. And we always say, okay, we have to make it a little bit more warmer, you know, because okay. it's, it's different for the Spanish market. Right. So you kind of started from that yeah, shift of you moving to Spain, right? You kind of started this whole new world, a whole new market and kind of saw how different things work, which kind of, I'm sure like helped expand, know your skill set and kind of led you yeah. to starting your own company. Now, I kind of want yeah. to know like, what is Expulso? How did this come about? Um, what do you, services do you offer? And kind of, yeah, just tell us a bit more about this new company that you started. Yeah. Yeah, definitely. So after working with so many agencies, I saw that there was still um, a lack of, you know, making sure that the client and their best interest is put into the actual strategy together. Mm-hmm. Because I think that people are always so interested in selling And, you know, in closing the client Mm -hmm. and they sometimes forget, okay, but maybe it's not all about selling and closing the client, but maybe explaining to them because I've heard even a lot of um, peers of mine, they're like, okay, but it's fine. If he'll just pay you for two months, it should be fine. But I'm like, no, he'll pay me for two months, but then he'll be worse. He's not going to know what to do. He's going to think that maybe content marketing or digital marketing, it's not the right thing for him or the right fit. Mm -hmm. Instead of me explaining to him of, hey, like if we do this, there is a possibility, there is a chance that it might not work and we need to give it more time. Are you willing to actually, because when you work with startups and small companies, they're going to have a limited budget Mm -hmm. and they're not going to know if this is a good investment or not. You know, they're going to hear from a lot of people like you need to invest in, you know, your online presence and your brand awareness and stuff, but they're not going to really understand how long that takes um, and to actually set up a strategy that works for them too. Um, so that was one of the main things I was like, I want to educate the clients, but not like in the way that, Hey, I do this, I do that. But in more in the business perspective of, I just don't want to sell you on this. And, you know, many times we have said to clients, I don't think this is the right time for you to invest on this. Mm. And that was one of my my main things to actually be honest Mm. with the clients and the people that I work with. That was one of the main things because, and I understand because now that, you know, we're on the other side. You need Mm -hmm. to keep your business alive. But, you know, I want it to make a difference. And I said, you know, I want to start this because I really do want to help people. And Mm -hmm. I want to be honest with people. And I want to get rid of, you know, that perspective of that narrative that, you know, I'm investing in digital marketer, investing in the agency. It's a waste of money. And they're going to take all your money away. I want to get rid of that, too. I want people to, to be open to collaborating with other agencies, with freelancers, with people. Mm -hmm. So that's pretty much why I wanted to get started. Um, And I did it with my best friend who also we kind of we work together, but she also has her own clients like her background is different than mine. Mm -hmm. And we actually like we can work hand in hand together like it's perfect because I focus on one line. She focuses on another Mm -hmm. like line completely. And it's good. So, you know, that was one of the things that like you can provide this. I can provide that. You know, we can do all of these things together, like uh, the both of us together. We can do like a 360 marketing strategy. So I said, this is good. Like we can make something different. Like we can do something a little different. Right. So that's pretty much how we got started. So yeah, it seems like you really want to give a personalized approach to like helping startups and smaller companies get yeah. their feet off the ground. And you're not trying to sell them on something and, and promise them, you know, 
I'm going to have this X amount of, you know, I'm going to get this return on investment in two months or something like that. Like you really want to build an ongoing relationship and help them. And I think that's yeah. what kind of give the support that they need with their limited budget, but also just trying to get their feet off the ground. So, and it comes exactly. from like your own experience. Now, um, Jess, if you're listening, hi, Jess. Jess is mm-hmm. Andrea's um, co-founder. And just, yeah. I think her background, right? Her line of work is more graphic design, right? And brand imaging and stuff like that. Yeah. She does all the branding like she's actually her career was actually communications and graphic design and visual Mm -hmm. design. So she's been working in communications, corporate communications and branding um, and companies in Europe, also here in Nicaragua. Mm -hmm. And she also does more the content part. Actually, she does more of the content part of, you know, letting clients know how to set the tone for the messaging and everything they need to do on social media and stuff. So Mm -hmm. she does take care of that part, too. That's awesome. So kind of bringing your, your two worlds together to offer like yeah. a, a really like well-rounded experience for your, for your clients. Now, just you guys started, right? I think it was near the, in the pandemic or before the pandemic. It was right? during the pandemic. Yeah. Now, how do you start? Like, how do two people like young people, right? Cause I think one really good thing about this podcast is that we invite people who are like, you know, senior level marketers and a big corporation, but also people like yourself yeah. who are just starting out and kind of have this passion for marketing and are, can share their insights with our listeners about starting their own business. So I'm just like interested about how that process was. Um, and how did you find your like clients? You're doing this all online. Yeah. So. How do you guys do that? How did you get your feet off the ground? Yeah. So actually during the pandemic, the agency that I was working with, you know, the biggest client that I managed for them, which is the one that they hired me for, Mm. um, said like, listen, uh, right now we don't really know what the future holds for us. So we can't really afford your services. Mm -hmm. So, you know, at that point with the agency, you know, the agency was pretty like amazing with that because they said, hey, we still want to keep you on board, but, you know, we have the client that has left. So is it okay if, you know, we kind of, you know, let that thing go and you kind of like help us out with other projects, like smaller projects. So that kind of took like time out of my day because it was like during the first four weeks of the pandemic. Mm. So it was like, okay, they were like, don't worry about it. We'll try to get you a a new client as soon as we can. But you know, the workload is not going to be the same. So I was like Mm. there in the pandemic, like kind of trying to figure life out, trying Mm. to keep myself busy. Um, so I started to like, kind of look to see if I can do freelancing jobs either there in Spain or, you know, anytime, any, anywhere. Mm-hmm. And I started to kind of like do some research to kind of go online and say, what are the best platforms for freelancers? Where can I actually get started mm-hmm. and working online and everything else? So through all of my research, I kind of found Upwork. Mm-hmm. So I did my Upwork profile. I kind of like figured out everything that I needed to know from blogs, videos, and stuff like that. And I kind of started applying to jobs. Mm -hmm. And in like, I think the first week I found, I think even two clients. Mm. Um, And that was pretty good. And I'm like, oh, there's actually like a big demand. And I would would take a look at the job postings. And there Mm. were so many jobs for freelancers, for digital marketing, for content marketing, even full-time jobs. Mm -hmm. And I was like, there's actually a high demand for it. So I kind of decided to like, I started off with the first client, Mm -hmm. like doing the freelancing job and also working with the other agency. And as I got going and, you know, my friend, she was actually my co-founder, Jess. um, I told her like, hey, because she couldn't really work yet because of the paperwork and everything back in Spain. I told her like, actually, like you can set your things up as a freelancer here on Upwork. You can get started. Like it will be a good experience. Mm -hmm. And all of a sudden I said, I see a lot of people that are looking for like a 360 marketing strategy for people that know about branding and marketing and content and everything. And I told her, Hey, maybe we could set up our own agency. Like, what if we do that? Like, would that be a good idea? Mm. And, you know, we started talking about it and we had talked about it before, Mm. but you know, life, she found another job. I found another job. So we couldn't really like find the time. And, you know, Mm. the pandemic was kind of like the perfect time where we kind of like pushed to do it because I didn't really know what my future was with this agency, if the client was going to come back or not. And she wasn't really working at the time. And I'm like, let's do this. I mean, let's really go ahead with it and get it done. Let's use Upwork meanwhile, and then we'll figure it out how we can get clients here in Spain Mm. and how we can like get started. Mm. And I said, I think Upwork is a good thing. And then we'll figure it out how it goes. Mm. So that's kind of how we got started. I mean, it was pretty much Upwork. 
That's crazy. It's kind of just, yeah. you know, it took a pandemic for you to actually like go out and chase this dream. But, you know, that's yeah. kind of a silver lining, right? To last year is having more time and even losing that like main client kind of pushed you to like, okay, let's see what I can do. And then starting to realize, hey, like, I think we can fill this demand. And at the same time, like I'm getting a lot of interest in my services. And I'm sure if you yeah. just did this, you we both would do something really great. So what services do you actually offer? Like what you said a lot about 360 marketing strategy, but what yeah. do you guys do? What's your approach? Yeah. So we focus mainly on either startups, small businesses, or we even help out agencies that want to scale. Mm -hmm. So we provide everything from um, PPC, SEM, SEO, content marketing, branding, um, we even kind of set up the business plan for people that there's startups that want to become part of, you know, incubators or programs for startups that have them scale. So mm -hmm. we even help them prepare their mission statement, their values, um, and everything of the business plan in itself. So they can actually apply to all these programs that they want to. Mm -hmm. So that is pretty much what we focus on. And, you know, when we say 360 is because I can do like the digital part and the, SEM and PPC and SEO and kind of just comes in and she does all the branding, all mm -hmm. the messaging, all the content and everything. So we kind of provide that specific service, you know, for, and we've even helped out agencies. We still do help out agencies that are kind of looking forward to scaling and, you know, improving and, and getting better, even like um, setting up a team and they're like, Oh, who should we need? Like, who do we hired? Like, how do we do that? So that's pretty much so you have a really it. comprehensive experience as well. Um, yeah. And I know from knowing you that you and Jess have put in many, many hours working late nights. Um, now, you because you yeah. work also with clients from around the globe. I think you have clients in South America, so in Latam, and then you have yeah. clients here, some clients, I think, in the U.S. So kind of how, like, what's a typical day like for you in at Expul? So what responsibilities do you have and how do you manage working across so many markets and time zones? It's crazy. <laughs> at, first, at first, it was so hard because, you know, at first you're so excited and you want to get everything done and you want to do everything. And if a client asks you a question, you want to answer it right away because um, you want to make sure that they feel supported and everything. So at first it was crazy. Um, our sleeping schedule was all over the place. Um, and the routine that we kind of had, um, it wasn't really working as well. We were trying to go to the gym, be healthy, all of this, and then try to get work done and stuff. So at first it was crazy. We couldn't really, because we, it was hard because some clients would reach out to us at eight or 9 PM, like central European time. And then we would even like start working there and we would go to bed at midnight, but then we would have to be up early for our Spanish clients. So at first it was kind of hard, but then we actually started, um, you know, organizing everything and even organizing things with the client. Mm -hmm. So we actually even set up Calendly. So we're like, okay, we need to think about like, what are the times that are going to be booked? What are the days that we're going to do meetings? But it pretty much took us even a year to figure that wow. out, like yeah. to see how we were going to get organized. Cause you know, you're trying to keep everything afloat. You're trying to make money. You're trying mm -hmm. to make sure everyone's happy. So. Yeah, that's mm -hmm. really difficult, but also eye opening, right? You get to learn like best yeah. practices. Maybe we shouldn't do that. I mean, a lot of, you know, starting a business, especially online and in the pandemic is going to be a lot of <laughs> yeah. feeling out what this works, that doesn't work. Maybe that's not the kind of client we want. It's really hard to start your own business, but I think over time you start learning and kind of figuring out which projects would be best, kind of what fixing your schedule, stuff like that is really yeah. important. <laughs> now, this is the content mix. So we obviously want to know more about your perspective on, you know, content marketing, also some social media marketing. Um, so one thing that I really enjoy, and if people haven't checked out, well, definitely go check out um, Explosive's mm -hmm. Instagram, but you guys have taken a really fun, I call you guys Explosive Girls, but you guys have taken a really fun yeah. approach to like raising awareness about the company but also by providing like marketing tips and stuff like that so kind of wondering like so you've done this really cool social media campaign what platforms are you using for that can you describe a bit more about like what think thought process went behind it um and yeah. do you find like some channels to be more effective than others when it comes to social media yeah so when we first got started actually doing you know social media content for clients and even for ourselves um, it had been a while since we had set up a, a content um, strategy for, mm -hmm. you know, startup. And it's, it's completely different when you do it for a company, for a multinational, it's completely different. Right. So when we first started, even ourselves, we had to kind of like figure out, okay, 
um, let's take a look at what people are doing. Let's see what all the other agencies are doing and let's kind of like figure out. And even, you know, this past year, we've educated ourselves even a lot more and so much regarding content and everything. So through a lot of learning, through a lot of, you know, um, blogs and videos and everything and like looking at it ourselves, we actually, a lot of people would tell you, and, you know, one of the main things we even tell our clients, you know, your content, you need to figure out how to do it. You need to make sure that the messaging goes along with who you are and what you're trying to accomplish. And you need to always make sure that you have the same voice and everything. Mm -hmm. So we figured out like, who's our voice? Like, who are we? What's our voice? What are we going to do? What's our messaging? Mm -hmm. So we see that a lot of people are usually scared of talking about marketing or talking about something that they don't know. And they feel very uncomfortable in doing it. So I said, you know, the point of all this is for people to understand in a very easy way Mm -hmm. to not think that this is something that they'll never understand Mm -hmm. and, you know, to make sure that they feel comfortable in having this conversation about marketing. So we got started and we said, hey, let's do something fun. Let's do something a little bit more relatable. Um, you know, sometimes people think like, oh my God, they must do so many things. They must know so much. They're so unreachable. They're so like, I could never get to this point of knowledge. And I said, let's make it completely different and to not overthink the content. You know, that was Mm -hmm. one of the main things of like, will people like this? Will people not like this? You know, kind of stepping out of our comfort zone and saying, we should try all these things out. We should see if people like it. We should see if people enjoy it and actually setting our personalities, you know, making sure that people know who we are. You know, whenever we meet clients, one of the things that they like is how comfortable they feel with us and how open they feel with us. I actually remember once a client said, you know, you're the first agency that doesn't make me feel stupid. Mm -hmm. And that thing, you know, that, you know, one of the main things is like, okay, people need to be like comfortable with us, open to us. And we should represent that on social media too. Yeah. So that is kind of like how we got started. And, you know, we brainstorm from our day to day. And I, we always say like, what questions have our clients asked? that you know that they don't know or it's something common that people don't know mm. and that's how we actually start the process um when we first started we were mainly focused you know on instagram and like okay let's just think about instagram if we want to do this or we want to do that so we've seen that it works best for us you know using instagram and tiktok and linkedin actually those are three main ones right um because now and i think even in the past couple of years you know linkedin has become a little bit more open and people Mm -hmm. like start talking to you a lot more yeah you know and even getting started conversations instead of just being interested in you know in a job opportunity or they want you to apply to anything so that has been great for us too you know even during the pandemic a lot of people would reach out to us just to talk to to see what we were doing to see if we had any tips any stuff like that so Mm -hmm. that has been great for us those are the platforms that have worked um so far when it comes to creating content and we see Mm -hmm. that people do do like it but you know it's been a challenge because sometimes we don't really have the time to create all that content because Mm -hmm. we have to work so much so you know we're still we're trying to make sure that our mission still remains of putting out content there that people will easily understand and will enjoy Mm -hmm. so we're still kind of getting there too that's really cool and i think it really ties into what you were mentioning in the beginning about like when you came to spain you kind of learned this or kind of implemented this idea of, you know, people are looking for someone that's personable or someone that's a good, like a person that's wanting to help and authentic. And I think yeah. you've really tied that into um, your own social media campaign for Expulso, but I'm sure it must be yeah. a lot of work to try to, you know, help companies, right, with their own <laughs> marketing strategies and then while doing yours at the same time. So it must be a lot to do, but I really think it's a fun and like approach to kind of getting your name out there and also teaching people yeah. about really useful marketing tips. So definitely check that out for people who haven't yet. Um, now, <laughs> yeah. you mentioned how like some people get things wrong when it comes to content marketing or it's just in general. Um, and you also mentioned how one of your clients said that you're the first person that never made me feel stupid. Um, so what do you think some companies get wrong when it comes to content marketing or when they're kind of advertising their services or trying to connect with their target audience? I think one of the main things is that they don't personalize things Mm. and it is very hard because I've lived it. And I know it is so hard to get to know who you're targeting Mm. and sometimes your buyer persona or who you're trying to target is so broad. It Mm. does happen. But I think sometimes starting with the point of view of even when people like new e-commerce, um, companies or startups, they're kind of, their first mindset is I just want to sell, sell, sell. Mm. And like it's completely different if nowadays that we have 
access to so much information, to so many platforms. And there are so many companies that are trying to kind of make, you know, a, they have this mission that they want to make a difference in the world and stuff mm -hmm. like that. And you feel more comfortable in the fact that you're helping a business that has, you know, a bigger mission in the world than in life. Mm -hmm. And, you know, sometimes I think companies forget that they forget to connect with the earned consumer, with the buyer persona. Um, and I think that's something they need to keep in mind. Sometimes they're very robotic to kind of mm. like, they just kind of copy paste the same content strategy and we'll do this and we'll do that. You know, I've seen it in many agencies and I know that it's because they don't have the time and they just want to, you know, acquire a new client and they just want to get things going and the ball rolling. But I think they forget that sometimes, you know, you have to think about your end consumer. And once you do, things are a lot easier because people mm -hmm. don't think like, oh, you're just like another company that wants to take my money and mm -hmm. like not something that you're working towards. And people, they they kind of think that they don't need to know, like they think that the end consumer doesn't need to know them as a company and their mission and their values. Sometimes they forget that. I actually do want to know your mission and your values right. and who you are and all that stuff. And still to this day, people struggle with that. They're like, but yeah, I don't think that people need to know my mission or anything. And I'm like, no, they do. Yeah, they do so need important. To know. <laughs> I think, yeah, I guess a lot of people forget to like keep things simple and kind of yeah. keep everything to the core of your company's mission and kind of what you want out of it rather than overcomplicating yourself. And I think that's, you know, it happens nowadays. We have so much access to information, right? That people yeah. might be, think they read, you know, 300 articles on SEO and they're going to implement an SEO strategy and they're just missing the whole point. They get overwhelmed. It's kind of like getting oversaturated, you known with information. Yeah. So I guess, yeah, your advice is keep it simple and remember what you're doing yeah. this for. Like, what's the purpose? What's driving you to do this? Um, yeah. Yeah. So I think, and also I kind of want to know too, as we're asking you these questions for advice and stuff like that, um, what skills do you think are most important for marketers nowadays? Especially, I feel like the whole world's definitely shifted um, because of the pandemic and the relationships and how we connect with people online is totally different than it was even a year ago. So what skills do you think marketers need today to find success? They're soft skills. <laughs> I think, yeah, I think we all need to mm -hmm. work on our soft skills. I mean, you know, one of the main things that, but not even in marketing, I think in any type of industry, you need to educate yourself all the time. Like you need to make time out of your day to actually go online and see what people are doing. What are the new updates in the different platforms that you use? Mm -hmm. um, not in every platform, just focus on the ones that you're using at the time with your clients or for yourself. And one of the main things is working on our soft skills. People now, I think they appreciate, um, you getting to know themselves outside of the company and you actually understanding, you know, I had so many interviews during the pandemic, you know, one of mm -hmm. the main things was like, Oh, have, have you managed the pandemic? Like, how are you? How are, like, you know, all these soft skills that most of the time we don't think are necessary. And it is, it is completely necessary for you to keep clients. You need to understand and be empathetic from mm -hmm. their point of view and what they're doing because they're struggling the same way that you're struggling. So I think that working and uh, leadership skills also, because mm. I think that during the pandemic, a lot of people realized that we lack a lot of leadership because many people like they were either fired because of the whole situation or they had to quit their jobs because they didn't really mm. know how the situation was going to go on. And, you know, when it comes to such a stressful situation, you need to make sure that you as a leader make sure that, you know, people understand where you're coming from and people understand where you want to go and for them to be, you know, on board with everything. But, you know, you need to make sure you, you are empathetic, you understand other people. And that is one of the main things that sometimes we think, Oh, we don't need that. I just need to deliver results to the client. Right. And I'm like, no, you there's actually have to, to yeah, there's much more to it. And building, you know, you never really know what that relationship could bring and that business mm. relationship could bring. And we need to think about that too. You know, probably we need yeah. to think about that first, about the person and not the company or their job role. Especially, yeah, that's really important. I think empathy is something that drives marketing. People are looking for yeah. brands and for companies that they feel like understand them and their problems and can help them. And I think right now are like the demand that we have for that human connection and that connection in general is through, and we're getting it a lot through the internet virtually now. So yeah. I think we really have to keep these things in mind that, you know, it's very easy to treat someone as if they didn't exist because you're talking to someone on a computer and it's very hard. You lose that like human connection. And I think what you just said is so important is that connect, make sure you connect with the people you're working with and try to understand them in order to help them get yeah. success. 
Now, as I've said many times already, you're a business owner, and I'm sure there's yeah. been a lot of pressure to really produce meaningful work while satisfying your clients and trying to keep your business afloat. So for anyone that's interested in starting their own business, especially like a digital marketing agency, like what advice would you have for them? Um, and what's the most meaningful aspect of your job for you? I think one of the main things and that I always say, you always think it like when you look at it from the outside, it's so hard to have an agency. Like it's so many things that you have to do, but it's really not that hard. Mm. Most of the time is we set the limits, you know, in our own mind and we think that we're not going to be able to do something. So mm. if you're really passionate about something and you have the knowledge and the experience, or you think that you can actually make it work, just do it. Um, I think that sometimes we're so scared of the outcome of failing of what are people going to think? What is my family going to think? What are my friends going to think? And it's really not that hard. Once you're in that position, it's really not that hard. And, you know, I think the second thing is remember why you're doing this. Like, don't think that you're doing this because you're getting started or mm. because you want to make money and you just want to get started with something like make it because you actually do want to make a difference. And this is something that you're really passionate about, because if not, it's just going to become another job and another thing that you have to do and you're not going to do it with you know the same willingness it's not going to be the same so um always think about that always think about a bigger purpose mm -hmm. and you know and another main thing is that a lot of people and a lot of peers are so willing to help and mm -hmm. if you need like someone's advice or anything just reach out to people on linkedin right. there's so many groups facebook even there's so many things that people are so willing to help Mm -hmm. um, they'll tell you like tips, advices, everything, you know, we found so many people that are willing to, you know, help us out to give us, you know, their point of view and people that we've never met. And mm -hmm. that has been great. Like for me, that has been one of the, the biggest things is that you can actually reach out to people mm -hmm. and that are highly successful even. And they'll let you know, like, Hey, I started out like this. Mm -hmm. So, you know, that networking, but people that are on the same path as you, that is amazing. You know, you yeah. reach out to people and you'll make, you know, new friendships, you'll meet new people. And it's just amazing. It's, no, it's like taking risk, right? It's, it seems taking risk and kind of chasing your, your goals yeah. or your dreams and finding a job that really like gets you out of bed in the morning. Now, yeah, we're going to transition to another part of the interview, which is about mm -hmm. speaking of getting out of bed in the morning, um, <laughs> some daily habits or recommendations that you have. So I think a lot of times when we have guests on the show, everyone's really curious to know, you know, if they have any daily habits that attribute to their success um, or different like sources of inspiration. So do you in particular have any habits that you would contribute, like attribute to your success? Yeah. I mean, I think one of, when we first got started, we watched so many videos. We started reading so many books because we wanted to to know from other people's experience how they were doing it because it was hard. Like we, you know, the first couple months, it was so easy to um, work 16 hours a day and work on the weekends and stuff like that. But it got to a point that we felt that we were burnt out, right? So we were like, okay, so what do we do now? So we kind of figured out the best things that work for us. You know, we kind of do a mixture of what we've seen with other people's experience. Something that works the best for us is actually organizing our day. Like, for example, before, like, we organize the day that's going to start, like, the day before. Like, mm -hmm. we organize everything, like, at night, like, everything that we're going to do. We try to prepare for that because sometimes we don't really know. you like, okay, yeah, I have a meeting. I have this, I have that. And it's in your head, but you don't really think about what you're doing. So organizing our calendar was one of the biggest Big things, things. Mm -hmm. that worked for us because even setting, like, the time for our lunch, of when we take a break and, and when we're going to have dinner, when we're going to be over with work, that has worked perfectly for us to organize everything with our clients to make sure that we have enough time to work on a strategy. Because on a day-to-day, -day, you get so many meetings and calls and messages that you kind of forget what you have to do and then you kind of leave it for the next day. Mm. So that has been one of the biggest things. Um, and actually setting personal time for ourselves. When you get so cut up, you know, in work, we're so eager to like make more money and get... Um, out there and for people to know us and to do so many things um, that you kind of forget that you need to take care of yourself because you're the one that's running this business. Yeah. And, you know, for us trying to work out and even meditate has worked amazingly for us because yeah. on the day to day, you communicate with so many people and, you know, sometimes there's people that are going to be upset and people that are not going to really know if they want to continue doing this or mm. if they find value in what you're doing. So you need to kind of like not take things personal as well, mm -hmm. because if you know that you're doing the best that you can and if you're providing with the client the best service that you can, 
like you should be fine um yeah. and actually have the stomach like for me it's kind of like one of the biggest things have the stomach to take no for an answer mm. to because you know there's so many times that we apply to so many jobs that we want or that we give so many proposals and it might not like end up like falling like actually coming into realization and mm. you know having that like strength of being like okay it's fine like i'm gonna continue i'm gonna go on and you know having that stomach and having that mindset that everything's fine or even when losing a client um and you know you know that you're not gonna be you know making as much income as you were the month before making sure that you're okay with that because it's kind of like part of the journey um that has been one of the biggest things too like understanding that this is just business you know mm. this is how it works and you know we'll make sure that the next month will be okay and will be better and to continue that on as well mm. you know it's it's not easy but mm. if your heart and your mindset is in the right space you'll be fine you'll be fine yeah i think that's great advice for our listeners especially of you know getting out of your comfort zone i think you're not going to get any success if you're not willing to be uncomfortable and you know learning that not yeah. everything's going to be perfect you're going to lose the client a client's going to get mad it's not it's not going to be rainbows and butterflies basically the entire yeah. time and it's really important to keep like reminding yourself that and just like you said like n- not addressing it now right and kind of keeping that mindset now rather than when like, things like this come up you're not disappointed or you don't spiral I yeah. think like, you have to like prep yourself you know like this is not going to be an easy road um and you also you mentioned re- about like organizational skills are important to you and organizing your calendar and you did a lot of research when starting a company but do you have any like apps or tools or platforms or even books that you find that have been really helpful as you started your journey with Expulso? Yeah, I think one of the main things for me is Mm -hmm. for communication. I think that Slack has been the best one Mm because it's something that people are very familiar with and it's easy to communicate yourself with. So if you have a team that's more than three people or if you're working with many freelancers too, because you have a lot of agencies that um, work with, they outsource for a lot of, you know, their services, use Slack to communicate with people. Because for me, that is, you know, the best way. It's very easy. I actually started using, I think, was back in 2017. Mm. Um, And I think, oh, this is of great value. And now that, you know, the pandemic kind of changed how we work, um, a lot of people are using it more and more. So Mm. you need to make sure that you make communication a lot quicker because Mm. with 20 emails, it's kind of hard to actually know what's going on and people Mm. get lost and things get lost in translation too. Mm. So it's a lot better for me. Slack has been one of the best ones. For us, there's many like organizational for to organize teams and stuff, but there's this mm-hmm. one called Asana. We mm-hmm. use Asana to set up our daily tasks and to set up our projects. That has been one of the ones that we like the most, but there are many, many others. Like, but for me, knowing, because even though we're two people like in our agency right now, and sometimes we outsource for, for other types of services, you need to know what the other person is doing. Like I need to know what my partner is doing, what she's doing, what she's working on it's good for us to kind of know the whole like picture of what's going on on a day-to-day basis with us. Yeah. Um, and we actually, we set up, we tried to set up like meetings, like at the end of the week, the beginning of the week and the end of the week to kind of know how, where we're at, because sometimes we might have a client that is asking me to do many, many things about regarding digital marketing strategy and branding. And I need to know what my partner is doing in regards to time. How is she doing? How is she managing everything? So I think Asana is a good one. Mm-hmm. Um, and for me, books, there are so many books, but there's <laughs> the last one that I read is The Scientific Method of Time, mm. because I think it kind of tells you, because sometimes we think, oh, it's just not the right time for us to get started. It's not the right time for me to do this. And it talks about that. It talks about how even the science, the science behind timing, you mm. know, that even with, um, even in sports, for example, in a basketball basketball game, that people that don't perform that well, you know, in the first half and they might perform better in the second half. So it's kind of telling you how your mind works when it comes to timing and how we perceive time. And, you know, I think sometimes we're just scared and might say, oh, it's not the right time for us to do that. It's not, you know, the time is not right. So we postpone so many things Mm -hmm. and we kind of need to know that it's okay to get started with something that we don't really know much about. And it's Mm -hmm. okay if we've done it, you know, with, with, industries and customers that we don't really know how we're going to do things but we know that we're going to ask for help from someone and stuff but we just do it you know there there is such a thing as the right timing but there is such a thing as you know using it as an excuse Mm -hmm. so i think that has been one of the books that has been very eye-opening when it comes to how our mind works in regards to time 
Mm -hmm. That's why it's so important to always, if you have an idea or something that you're feeling passionate about, to act on it right away. And rather than being yeah. scared of the possibilities of it failing and everything like that. Exactly. Well, we've come to the end of our interview. Mm -hmm. And I just want to thank you again for joining us. But I also wanted to know if you have any final takeaways or parting advice for our listeners. <laughs> I mean, for people that are starting up and for freelancers, as for everyone out there, possibilities are endless, mm -hmm. you know, and to not be scared of reaching out to other people and to not be scared to kind of do whatever it is that we want to do that we're passionate about. You know, that has been one of the main things that I wish I would have done this sooner. I say it all the time because mm -hmm. it would always seem so hard in my head. And I'm like, no, I probably it's just too hard. I'm going to need a lot of help. And, you know, just do it. Don't be scared. There's no, mm. like, you can do everything that you want as long as you're passionate about it and as long as it's, you know, one of your mm. dreams and your goals and you'll be fine. Yeah. And I'm also sure that after this interview, people want to reach out to you. So I was wondering what's the best way to get in touch so that you can also kind of pay it forward, right? You said you reached out to a lot of people on different networks yeah. and now you can pay it forward. So are you active on LinkedIn or other platforms? What's the best way of getting in touch? Yeah. Um, get in touch with me through LinkedIn. Mm -hmm. um through the explosive marketing um instagram account mm -hmm. also we have the tiktok account so get in touch with us we're always on top of our social media but you can reach out to linkedin linkedin will be like the best option mm -hmm. so it's my name andrea aldana so um reach out to me send me a message you know for people that want to know more or they want to get started or anything or mm -hmm. working as a freelancer too in in spain um i can definitely give them a couple tips Sure. Well, thank you so, so much again, Andrea, for joining us today thank on the Content you. Mix. And thanks to everyone for tuning in. For more perspectives on the content marketing industry in Europe, as always, you can check out veracontent.com slash mix and keep tuning to the podcast for more interviews with content experts. See you next time. Bye, Andrea. Bye. Thank you.